In this lesson, I'd like to go over some of the new form elements and functions that were added in HTML5 to make our forms more organized, readable, and smarter. The first thing we can do in HTML5 is we can group related items together in the form. This will help the visual structure and also make the form easier to fill out for our users. An example would be a long form with a group for personal information and a separate group for something like the purchase or product information. For our example, I'll set a group up here on the top with our name and email fields. We simply enclose the group items in a set of field set tags. So I'll add one here before the name input field, and then close it after the email input field. Let's save that small change, and we'll go back out to the browser and refresh our page. And now you can see those two form elements are grouped together with an outline around them. Once we have a group, we can improve it by adding a legend tag. And this lets us name the group so the user sees what information it contains. I'll just go inside of our field set and I'll add a legend tag. And then inside the legend, we simply give it the name that we want our group to have. I'll just call this one personal information. And then we'll close the tag up. Let's save that change. And now when we refresh the browser, you can see that our legend is added to the group. And if we add several of these on the page, we can have named areas for each one of our groups of information. Now another thing we can add to our form would be some help or instructions for a field to help the users figure out what needs to be entered. We do this by using the placeholder attribute. It will place some text inside the field before the user enters any data so the page stays uncluttered, but still offers some assistance. I'll add a placeholder attribute here into the email field. And we'll add some instructions about the email address. When we save that and refresh our browser, you can see our text appears right there in the field, and the default style shows it grayed out. My user can simply click in the field and then start typing their email address. Now the remaining features I want to go over will make all of our forms act smarter, especially in the new browser versions and in special UIs like smartphones and tablets. The first one is an attribute that will set the focus of the page on a particular field, just to make it easy to start entering information. It's the autofocus attribute, and for our form I'll add it to the first name field here up at the top. This attribute doesn't need any value. Just by placing it into the tag, it will set the autofocus for the page on that element. So this time, when I save and I refresh the page, you can see that our first name field is selected and there's a blinking cursor in it, indicating that that's where we want to start to enter our data. Now we have an additional attribute that we can add to help in validating the form. In older versions of HTML, you needed to add some JavaScripting to get any kind of active validation. But with HTML5, we can get this function using plain HTML forms and the required attribute. It makes sure that something is entered into the field before the form will submit. I'll add that attribute to both the name field and the email fields. Again, this attribute has no value. It simply needs to be there in order to make that field required for the form submittal. So let's see what happens on our browser now. I'll save the change and refresh the page. We can see the autofocus is set on our first field like before, but I'll just click the send button now without entering any information into either field. You can see that the first required field on the page comes up with a little help pop-up and it tells my user that they need to fill out that information. So I'll go ahead and add a name and let's try to click send again. Now you can see that the pop-up goes to the next field on the page that needs entering. When I enter something into the email address field and click send again, you can see that it goes off and tries to submit the form. Now HTML5 also gives us many new input types and each one will make the field respond in a smart way to help the user enter the right data. The first one we can try is actually the email field itself. What I'll do is I'll change the type attribute from text over to email. 
This instructs the browser that a proper email address needs to be entered in order for the form to submit correctly. So let's save that change. And we'll go back over to the browser and refresh. I'll enter a name since we know that's required. And then I'll enter something that's not an email address into the email field. When I attempt to submit the form, you can see a new pop-up comes up that says I need to have a properly formed email address. And if I add those elements in and try to send the form again, you can see this time the form submits. Down here, we're indicating quite a few more of these different types of inputs that we can use to make our form smarter. So let's go down into our page and I'll set them up. Each one needs a standard input tag, so I'll set that up first. We need the type attribute. And for this example, to make our field act like a password field, I'll set the type to password. All of our fields need a name, so I'll set that up too. And then I'll close off the input tag. Let's save that change. And we'll go back out to our browser and refresh. Now I can see what looks like a normal input field here next to the password label. But let's type something into it. You can see that for a password field, instead of showing the characters, it shows all dots. And that gives us a limited amount of security, so that no one could look over the user's shoulder and figure out what their password was. When submitted, this field will just enter the characters that the user typed in. Now let's try another one, a number field. It also needs an input tag, so I'll copy the one we did for password and paste it down below the label. We'll change the name, of course. And we'll also change the type. This time I'll use the number type. Let's save that change. And back over in our browser when we refresh, I'll go down to our new field. And first of all, you'll see when I roll over it, I get an indicator that allows me to add in numbers with steps. And just to show you that this will validate properly, I'll try to type something in that's not a number. When I attempt to submit the form, we're gonna get all of our messages. So let's set up the top fields. I'll add a name and an email address. And I'll try to send again. Now you can see that this field is blocking the submittal because a number wasn't entered. And of course, if I put in a number into the field and hit send, it goes off and tries to submit the form. The range type is similar to a number field in that it's only gonna let me submit a number. But let's go ahead and paste our input element in here between the numbers one and 10. I'll set the type to range, and I'll also set the name to range as well so that our form script can tell the data apart. You can see by the numbers here that we indicate we want a number, but we also want it between the numbers one and 10. To limit the value, we can use a couple of other attributes here. I'll add in the min attribute and set that equal to one. And I'll also set in the max attribute and set that equal to 10. Min and max can be used with any of my other number fields as well. But here, it also sets the range value. Now let's save our change and refresh our browser page. And the first thing you'll see is that this field shows up differently. Now, if we were using an older browser that wasn't capable of showing HTML5, it would just show a simple text field like before. But with our newer browsers, it actually adds in a slider that lets us set a value. This will work on tablets and phones too. And one more thing, we can set the initial value by using the value attribute like we saw before. I'll set the value here equal to one. Now when I save the page and refresh, you can see that the initial value for the slider is set at the one level. And my user can still pull the slider around to set what they want. Now the next two values are similar. They indicate to the user that we want a date and a time in a format. And sometimes that's difficult for them to do. So let's go down to our two labels. And again, I'll paste in an input tag for each one. As you probably guessed, the type here is gonna be date for the first one. I'll change the name as well. And the second one will be time.
Let's save those two changes. And over in our browser, we'll refresh. And now you can see we also get special fields set up. One of them shows a date format and the other a time format. And when we roll over each one, we get a set of controls depending on what browser you're using. One control lets me incrementally set up or reduce the values. And the second pull down menu lets me pull up a normal calendar. Now keep in mind this may look different in different browsers that you use, depending on the UI they have included. The time format is similar. It allows me to go in and add in a time format, and I can tab through the values setting whatever I need to to get the proper time that I want. Both of these will make sure that your data when it gets formatted will be proper, and any scripts that you use will recognize these as dates and times. The last one is kind of fun. When we ask a user for a color, we're going to need to have them give us a color description. I'll go down into our document, and I'll paste in another basic input tab, and we'll change this one to color for both the type and the name. When we save our change, and go back out and refresh the page, you can see that in the Chrome browser, I get a color swatch now instead of a text field. And when I click on it, I basically get a standard color picker. And this allows my user to pick out whatever color they want and enter it in. When we get the data submitted from the form, it'll give me a hexadecimal value showing the color that the user's chosen. Now, of course, if you are using a different browser than Chrome, you may see some different effects here. Most of these new types will work in the newest version of almost all browsers, but just do some testing and make sure that you get the look you want. Well, now you know not only how to set up forms, but also how to make them smarter and easy to understand and fill out. In the next section, we'll add some styles to our form to clean up the design.